Hey everybody, it's Pam at the Paper Outpost and I am coming to you from the messy desk. Yes, I am in the middle of making a junk journal, so there is everything everywhere. But I thought I'd pop in here and show you seven fun ways to play with doilies in your junk journal. That's right, the unsung doily. We haven't talked about it much lately and I think it deserves a little fanfare because they're very beautiful, they're very lacy, they have a Victorian-esque feel to them. Uh, lacy and pretty and they come in all sorts of different colors and there's just so many ways uh, you can use them in your junk journals and I'm just going to go through seven ways that uh, I've used and I just want to show you some easy ways to make them. They're all super simple and super fun so if you have a stash of these um, pull them on out and let's see what we can make with them and this is only scratching the surface of what you can do with doilies and junk journals so let that be said let's go. All right so I have marked in this current junk journal. I know you can't see where I've marked it, but um, I have marked um, seven places where I have placed a doily in here. So let me, uh, let me, uh, let me make some room. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to show you these up close and personal. All right, number one, big doily number one reveal. I don't even remember what the, the doily was at this point. Oh yes, this is a super easy one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to make these two. I'm just gonna show you all seven first. I think it's seven um, and then we'll go from there. So this is just doily ribbon or doily cluster or doily um, just a little adornment. You can use it like a fabric or a ruffle and here I just placed what was an old um, it was a magazine picture of an old coin from many many years ago probably late 800s, 900s, anyway, a long time ago. And I just nestled it behind it as a piece of um, cushion and uh, eye candy, and there you go. So that's one easy thing that you can do. So remember, if you have doily pieces, you can still do things like that with them. Okay, so let's go look into number two. Number two, we're digging in here in this journal. Here we go. Oh, we gotta move the clip. Move the clip, Pam. All right, and peekaboo. Another uh, fun and easy thing that you can make is um, a pocket, a very easy pocket. This is made out of just doily. There is no nothing else but doily here, and I'll, I'll show you how to make that. And I used a, some stickers and a little Stabilo pencil and did a little smudging and some inking on this guy. And now he functions perfectly, or she does, as a little upper tuck pocket. And uh, very fun, very easy, a great way to use a doily. That was used, um, I think, a five and a half inch doily. And let's see the next one. Number three is the classic, I call this the burrito pocket. Uh, very easy to make out of any doily. And if you want to uh, do something like this, it is wonderful to hold little items. So if you have little pretty pictures from books or magazines or old ephemera or specialty cards, collectible cards, tea cards, cigarette cards, tobacco cards, uh, fun little uh, decorative items and even pictures. They can hold beautiful old pictures from days gone by. So, um, so that's some fun things that you can do with a doily. Uh, very functional, very user friendly and uh, we go from here. Very easy to install as well. Uh, the next one, oh, this one is fun. I think it's probably my favorite. Um, this, I, I guess this is officially the, that was the full wrap burrito. This is the half wrap burrito. Now this is the corset wrap burrito. Um, it's basically just wrapping the doily around something you consider a very precious item. And I really, really love this old Victorian card. It's a letter from a teacher to a student. And uh, my um, doily didn't quite wrap all the way around. I didn't want to put a paper clip on it. I didn't want to glue it or do anything, but I thought I could do a little crisscross corset uh, tie with uh, some embroidery thread. And that does not need to be removed. I, hang, I hung a little, I tied it and hung a little uh, key from it but uh, you can easily slide this in and out without actually um, removing uh, the string so you don't need to do that which is a good thing so um, it makes it easy for the person to um, observe but it also keeps it protected yeah so this is the um, half wrap burrito doily uh, trick okay there we go and that actually tucks in very nicely it doesn't really if you have a chunky monkey journal it stays in there pretty darn put and it's not going to go anywhere but you could clip it in if you so choose and who, who do we have next okay cruising down the road um um we did that one we did that one going further going further going deep 
Maybe we only have six. I don't know. I'm probably forgetting one in here somewhere. Um, oh, this one is fun. Okay, maybe this is my favorite one. I just, I don't know anymore. It's so hard to tell. Um, <laughs> okay, this is a faux envelope. And what I did what I, was I used, I'm going to rearrange you a little bit. I used the doily as a faux uh, envelope flap. And uh, this is actually a faux envelope. Wait a bit closer here so you can see but there is actually no envelope here I just turned it into a pocket in the back but this is just uh, one piece and I'll show you how to make that but I put a little uh, triangle cut of something pretty here so it looks like it's peeking out of the envelope but it's all trompe fooling the eye and uh, it is just one piece this can be uh, journaled on if you so choose you do not need to turn this into a pocket you could leave the back blank and there's extra writing room on the back I made this from an index card and then see as you can see uh, not very well. There you go, Ditter. You can see there is a pocket back here. Just uh, I just glued in a U-shaped fashion, and there you have an instant pocket. And one more. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What do we have back here? Oh yeah, this is fun. This is a very um, uh, functional doily, a pretty doily, and um, back it up so you can see a little better. Okay, so basically this is a wraparound doily but it is glued on to the edge and it wraps around to either side creating two side tucks. So here I put in this pretty postcard against this beautiful uh, German magazine background. Thank you much, very, very much Lori for those beautiful German magazines. And um, this one uh, is a little pocket that I made with a pretty uh, leaf removable out of it, but that also functions as the um, this side of the tuck and I did go ahead and put a um, paper clip here just to secure both sides at the same time so you can use it as a double side tuck so there you go let me just make sure we didn't miss anybody because I feel like maybe we missed somebody probably did I'll be I'll be you know coming by later and going up oh, there it was it slid down um, I showed you that one just quickly okay hang on Okay, I went back and counted it. Apparently there are six, six amazing things you can make from Dorothy's. There are more. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and show you how we made these six. And uh, we'll just go through them one at a time. So the first one was the little, um, uh, actually let's make the, um, um, the little uh, corner tuck pocket first because it's pretty easy to make. And what I did was I took a, I'm just measuring so you know, uh, I think it's five and a half, five and a half ish size uh, doily. You can really make these from any size. Just play with what you have and you'll, you'll kind of figure out how to modify them to work. But basically what I did was I decided how big I wanted my um, pocket to be. So I didn't fold it right in half. I fold it kind of more like maybe into thirds. Okay. And then I fold, folded this in half and that gave me a nice big fat pocket. Okay. But what I decided was I didn't want to go and tuck into the pocket because there's some what I call um, blockages uh, inside here. This is things are going to bunch up against that. So I thought, well, let me take that out. Just stick that on the outside. Okay. And initially I thought, well, I could just wrap it around and glue it, but then there's still some sort of bunchy stuff here. So I decided to cut the whole piece off. That's right. I just went for it and said, be off with you, off with your head. There you go. You are gone, but we're going to use this for something later. So don't, don't give up. Okay, so this guy I turned into a uh, little upper corner tuck and all I did was I glued him together and that made him thick enough to become a little corner tuck all on his own. And I'm using Fabrifix uh, clear silicone glue here. Fabric, 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 paper, paper, paper. It's a good all around glue, grabs pretty quickly. And then I just seal it. You could seal it with any glue, would be fine. A glue stick would work, totally fine. Okay, so now we have that and then I took let me go closer so you can see what I'm doing. All right. I took, um, do, 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 oh, Okay. Um, let me just show you that guy again so you have an idea of what we are going towards. I think it's right here. Here it is. Here's prototype. Do, do, do. There it is. Right there. Okay. We're going to make that or something pretty darn close to it, depending on what I have left. All right. So I took some ink. This is a um, walnut stain distressing. And of course I have no papers to do anything on. I'll just use an old book page. Just came along here and inked it up a little bit. And uh, here I thought, well, maybe I could, uh, maybe I should trim him a little to be more square. There, that's a little better. Okay. 
Um, and now I want to do something to make a little accent here. I'm going to just put a little bit of this on the edge just to say I did. And what do I have? I see I spy with my little eye. I have some pretty lace here. That's very pretty. Maybe I'll just put a piece of lace there. And um, the other one, I use some stickers. You can use whatever you like, doesn't matter. Um, you could use uh, washi tape if you have washi stickers or regular stickers, or a piece of fabric would look cute. Um, and I think I'm just gonna use, well, that one could be really pretty. That piece right there is really pretty. Okay, let me use this piece. All right, do what makes your heart sing, right? Oh, that's a pretty piece too. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, they're all pretty. Okay, so we're gonna put this down. So let's just go ahead and glue that. And here I am going to use Fabrifix on purpose because it's a good fabric to paper glue. It does well fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. If I said that too fast before, that's the slower version. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put a little thingy there. Do, 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 do. This is um, the hand iron. Do, 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 do. Yep, there we go. All ironed in place. And I'm thinking it needs maybe some bling or some kind of color, I would like some color. Now it doesn't have to have color, it could totally be fine like this, but let's pull out something. We got some stuff to play with. I'm hanging myself on my cord. One day I will get the cords free mic. Yep, it's, I'm sure I'll get it at some point, okay. Um, all right, so let's, uh, eh, well, let's put a, a little flat back pink pearl on it. That would be nice, right? Or we could put an old um, typewriter number on. We have all sorts of things to play with here. Um, Okay, uh, I just have this little bin of little rhinestone blingy what-me-nots. And um, maybe let's just put a, a pink flatback pearl. This is pretty sticky, but if you're ever unsure, you just want a little security, put a little dab of glue, and then glue her down. Okay, so now we have this. That's very pretty, right? And I could le totally leave it just like that, but I just want to show you what I did with the other one if I can find the pencil. And I tried to put on, oh, there it is, found the pencil. Okay, this is an Aquarelle, this is always a mouthful to say, an Aquarelle Stabilo 8046. Um, it's basically like a watercolor pencil, but it's graphite, and that means that it will dissolve in water and kind of give you this steampunky sort of look. Okay, that glue is still drying. Okay, and um, I'll just use a little bit of, of water. You can use a Q-tip here, or your finger, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and uh, it's probably highly toxic, I'm sure, I don't know. <laughs> um, but what it does is it dissolves the pencil, and then you can get this smeared out kind of different look to it. Better, worse, the same, you decide. Okay, so there we go, we have that. And then now we have a beautiful little um, pocket and we can just glue here and glue here, glue it onto any corner of your page and you got a great little um, uh, corner tuck. Okay, so that's one. And where's that little piece? Don't anybody, oh, here it is. Okay, so now we can make that other thing. Um, and this would be just a little embellishment for the corner of a page. So what you can do with a piece like this is you can, um, you can first just like accordion fold it up. Are, are we close enough to see? Let's come super close. Okay. And then once you have it like that, you can, you can spread it out a bit, fan it out a bit like it would be a, um, a piece of material and uh, give it a, a a little bit different shape if you so choose. Okay, so um, you want it to lay flat and then decide where you're going to glue it at some point. So let's say I'm going to glue it onto this page. What I can do is I bring it down into um, somewhat of a point in the corner because we want whatever we're gonna put on top of it as our focal point to um, be hidden, everything to be hidden. So something like that. Okay, and this is just something I, I cut out of a piece of packaging and then I uh, glued a pretty piece of flowers on the top and inked around. Um, so let me just go ahead and demonstrate this guy. Actually what I, what I did do is I did this. Okay. Then I came in here and I smooshed him a bit. Then I came back with the big guy and I laid him down where I wanted him to live. And I like a little over flap of the edges um, just for uh, uh, aesthetics and then put him down. And then we have a little 
corner embellishment. Very cute, right? And you could you could modify this as page tabs and all sorts of fun things or, or openings for flaps of envelopes, things like that would look really cute. So that is that one. That's number two. And uh, all right, since I my do not have a, a memory like a uh, elephant, I need to look back in here to see what number three is. Number three, oh yeah, the full-size burrito. And uh, you can do this with like, I would say a medium size one is, I think it's this one I used because it had holes in it and I could um, easily thread the holes because uh, I'm going to do the corset wrap. So what I did was I came from the sides. I just decided how wide I want it. And, and this is nice because you can adapt it to the size of your pages and that works very well. And then at this point, you can come up from the bottom and close this little flap and instantly you have this cute little pocket. And if you want to reinforce the structure of this little pocket very easily, you can take a piece of washi tape um, and wrap right around it. And that way you're going to have a lot more structure and you're not fussing with glue through uh, doilies, which if you have ever glued doilies, you know how it can seep through the little holes that sometimes it can be a little problematic, but this will kind of handle all of those little issues. Okay. And it, was, uh, it will also structurally strengthen your um, project. There. Now, this is very light and delicate, it is true, but when you mount it to a page, it becomes much stronger. And it's very pretty and very lacy looking. So um, this is a great way to get that lace-like element in your uh, projects without actually using real lace. And you can load old photographs, or I don't know if you if you have some things you want to give them to play with and maybe put in some stickers, things like that. I mean, you can just load these puppies up with whatever you like and to your heart's content. You can keep them as you could clip it into a journal onto a page or you could glue the entire back, which is what I did to give it extra strength. So and mount it to the page and that way it's easy to load and unload. And the slight wedge design of this allows things to come in and out more easily. OK, so that is number three. And let us move along. Do, 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 do. Oh, there it is again, that weird song. <laughs> oh, okay, we did that one. We did that one. Now we're moving along to, pro oh yes, the, um, the half wrap. Oh yes, now, okay. I, I actually, I used a different one before, a different, um, it was this one I was going to do the corset wrap with. So we will do this one with the corset wrap. Okay, so this is the half burrito because we don't quite uh, do the bottom flap we just do the half so what you want to do is take item of choice and um, let me get item of choice hold on so let's say you come across something that is very meaningful to you um, and you would like to highlight it somehow in your journal this is a great way to do that this is an old uh, beautiful picture of a woman from um, somewhere Yes, I don't know where there's no markings on the back, but it did hang at one point. And um, you could also use a postcard or a Victorian trade card or a beautiful like photograph, maybe something that you came across or something from your family as something that um, you want to give extra highlight to. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to just fold it, just a nice little gentle wrap. This is also a way of preserving the item without um, gluing or anything like that, doing anything to the item. It is just nicely um, here, safe and sound in that little place. And now I'm just gonna take some, oh my gosh, um, embroidery thread, which is always in a knot on my desk. Um, I don't know how you guys do it and keep your embroidery threads organized. I know they're supposed to unravel and not not. Well, that doesn't happen in my world. They not. <laughs> um, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. I'm absolutely sure of it, but I'm carrying on nonetheless. Okay, here we go. All right. So what I want to do is I've doubled it up. Uh, I don't know how long. Um, maybe this is two, not maybe a foot and a half doubled, maybe three feet, four feet. Just make sure you have enough. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> um, I just threaded one side. I didn't even use a needle. I just went in bare bones and went pretty much across to the other side, which I thought sort of matched. And if it doesn't match, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfectly exactly this way, that way. Um, we're just um, doing impressionism here. This is impre my version of impressionism of a corset tie. 
Now there's certainly, you could do this a lot fancier. You could use different kinds of paper or fabric and use eyelets and run your corset strings through that and, and just run off an entirely different direction. I only got one string there that time. Did you see that? Yeah, that was, that was uh, a big fail. <laughs> okay, we try again. All right, I'm going for the biggest hole. I just thought that'd be easier. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing and come across here. Hopefully all will go well and I'll be able to, uh, and here's another little secret. If you don't have a hole, you can make one. Yeah, you can punch it with a paper punch or a pin. And uh, that's another way to sneakily do your corset. So take your, your corset look. Okay, so mine looks like not like a corset at all, but if it did, actually, let me, let me attempt this. Do as I say, I, okay, you want to see, I'm going to do one more and I'm going to, I'm going to poke a hole and see how, how that goes. Cause I think I have enough thread here to do that. Yes. Okay. What do I have? Nothing but a pencil. Okay. We'll just use this. All right. We'll see if we can go through here. Oh, I'm through. Yep. That wasn't too hard. I'll be very honest. That wasn't too hard to get through. It pretty much punched like a paper doily would. The trickiest part is get it through. And that actually went pretty easily too. So I want you to know that it's easier than it looks. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm just going to tie it off. And maybe I don't have a little key I can dangle from this one. Okay, but what do I have is the question. And then I'm just going to tighten these a little. You know, you don't want to course it too loose. You know, we're trying to stay snug. Not but tearing. You definitely don't want tearing in this department. Okay, so I'm just going to tie this in a knot because I think that's going to be the easiest without causing too much craziness going on here. Okay. Now, hopefully I get that not tight. It's not looking very tight at the moment, but oh, okay, there we go. Hold that down. This is where you need that extra finger. Sunny, where's your, where's your paw? Okay. So I have that. And what I can do is I can maybe just glue these little guys to the bottom of them. Cause I think that would be so cute. So let's try that. Cause maybe, uh, um, maybe I could just do it to one to, okay, to here like that and put one on the back and then just glue it all together and have it be a little dangle. Okay, let's do that. Again, this was just packaging, so it was a little thicker, uh, like just a thin cardboard or, a thi you know, just something off of packaging. And I'm just gonna put enough glue that it's gonna go through both strings and I'm gonna lay it down. Okay, my strings down. I'm just gonna pick this up, my sticky finger, and I'm gonna put that on there and squeeze. Yeah, it's going to squeeze and just hold for a second. And in a second, it'll be dry. And there you've got a little dangle. Isn't that cute? That's just so cute, right? So we've got our um, corset with a dangle. And that's a little wrap. And you can just tuck this inside your journal without clipping or doing anything to it. Or you could put a paper clip on the page to secure it. Um, and I hear I just tucked it in because I think it's fine the way it is. Honestly, I think it's just perfectly fine. Um, okay. So moving right along, that was pretty easy to make. Uh, so sometimes we forget about the things we have, you know what I mean? That, that does happen. And it happens to me, um, all the time. So it's good to, idea to have a little reminder. And sometimes when we pull out our old toys, we find new ways to play with them. Okay. What's, what's in there? There's something deep. Did I forget about it? Oh yeah, I got to show you how to make this guy so cute. Okay. This is the little faux envelope. Okay. And I turned him into a pocket. All right. Let's make this little guy. That's what he looks like. Okay. And we need an index card. And if you don't have an index card, then any uh, piece of cardstock or back of a greeting card or something like that will work perfectly. Hold on. Okay. I have returned all the way from the other side of the room with a paper clip and uh, well, Whoa, let me get some more light on the subject here. Okay, so regular paper clip. Let me look at my prototype again. What on earth did I do? You know, sometimes it's a whirlwind. It's a whirlwind. Okay. Oh, I shouldn't stuff these so much. Oh, that was the second last one. And the first last one is here. Hmm. Okay. Well, I must have just either folded it in. I probably folded it. Did I fold it in half? I just made it too. You know, it's not crazy. I'm sniffing the glue bottle too much, I guess. Okay, here we go. What did I do? It was the same. I must have just cut it off. Oh, I know what I did. Oh, okay, it's all coming back now. Okay, this was the process. Okay, all right. Isn't it? This is like we're just hanging out together at like my house and we're figuring this out. I made, I used a little doily and this little baby doily 
is uh, one, two, three and a half inches wide. And I made the doily decide how long the item was going to be. Mm -hmm. So I put the doily down about halfway point and I decided to cut it here. Okay. Uh, so what I did was I glued the doily on the back. Okay. So um, let me put it on here. Okay. And then, so this is the back. This is the front. And then I went over to my guillotine so I could get a straight cut and I just cut down here. So let me do that. Oh, guess what? My guillotine is covered. <laughs> I use it as an extra table. Do you ever do that? You use your cutting devices or the places that you're supposed to. You swear you're going to keep clean and, and you don't. I know. Okay, so there is our little envelope. Isn't that cute? Um, already pretty much done. I'm just going to go ahead and ink it around. And you could even round the edges of this if you want. Okay, I think I'm going to ink that. And I don't think I inked this, but I think I will this time, just so it has that little bit of a antiqued Victorian sort of pizzazz to it. Yeah, and get this little front guy a little heavier on the inking, coming around the corners maybe a little more. I call that hewing, hewing it in. Okay, and now I'm going to. You can use this, use this with a pencil or anything, but I happen to use a, the Stabilo pencil because it was here. And I decided to make the normal lines we see in an envelope. So I put something up to about here and then I brought it back down there. And then put this here and this here. You know how it kind of does that, okay? And then we did the wet thing, okay? Use Q-tips. <laughs> Okay, so now we have a basic idea of this old aged envelope, what it's starting to look like. So this is going to be the part that is going to look like the inside. So we can put anything we want there and, it, and just make it look like it's peeking out. So let me see what I have. What do I have that is cute? Oh, you are so cute. Hang on, let me find some. Okay, so I just found this sticker and uh, yeah, I know it's wide enough. So I'm going to put it down here and then I'm just going to draw on my little magic line approximately where I have the lines. So I know it's going to fit inside there and I'm just going to come along here and cut on those lines. It's not perfect. It's okay. Mm. And this I am going to ink a little bit at the top. It's going to pick it up a little bit. Stickers are sometimes a little waxy, but not bad. Okay. So I have that. Now I'm going to try my darndest to peel this apart and I don't have to. I could actually just stick the whole thing down. Sometimes I wonder why we bother taking off the back, but I have successfully removed the back. All right. Okay. Are we good? Okay. So this is what I have. Now it looks like it's poking through. Now, if you want to come through, you can come in here and just like emphasize the edge a little bit more with a little bit more pencil. Okay, in case there were some white areas that didn't quite get covered to make a good sharp looking like an edge to your envelope. And now it just looks like there's something there. And here's your little envelope flap. You can, you can ink up this side too. And you could even put something behind here if you wanted to reinforce the flap and have it be a little bit more uh, structural or solid if you want to do that. But honestly, I think it's for a, a little piece that is going to go down in your journal, it's going to be just fine. So you can glue this onto any page of a journal. And if you were going to make it a pocket behind it, you would turn it over and just glue a U shape and then glue that down and then let that sit for a couple minutes. And you've got yourself a nice little pocket where you can come and, and tuck in, uh, you know, Aunt Martha and Uncle Joe. And uh, that'll be awesome. And oh, I did. I put a something a little, a little something here. Well, I have another one of these guys. That would just be so cute right there. Wouldn't that be so cute? Okay, let's put it there. So that's how these things come together, folks. What can I tell you? Um, these are fun. These are easy. Anybody can do them. I certainly hope you're having fun and getting lost and in your papers and, and uh, finding some peace and joy in there and maybe a smile or two and a giggle. So I hope you had fun. And uh, let me go find you know who. Hold on. We have uh, someone in the house who would like to say a few words. And uh, San, you insisted on saying a few words. Yes, hello everybody. Mom, you got it on Super Zoom again. Okay, I'll just roll with it. <gasps>
pull out your doilies, everybody. There's possibilities in the doilies. Don't forget about your doilies. I know, I know. Mom forgot about them too. So get your doilies out and have a lot of fun. Happy crafting. Bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, son. You can run back up to Papa. I was very grateful you came down and shared a little time with us. Um, so um, there you have it, folks. So I hope you like these ideas. I hope they just uh, spark a little bit of, um, you know, revamping some, some of the old with the new. And um, thank you for everybody who's been around and for all the new members and paper lovers who have uh, come across the Paper Outpost. Um, um, I'm so happy you're here. And let's hang out and have some fun and make some papery goodness together. My videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're audio. It's new material. You get um, um, all sorts of talk. <laughs> you get all sorts of talk about uh, junk journals, paper crafting, life of a crafter, answering crafty questions, and there's three years worth of material on there. So feel free to check it out. And bonus, it's free to listen to. All the links are down below in the description box, uh, drop down description box, and um, um, oh, I have a free monthly email newsletter. Please sign up for that if you haven't done so. Why would you want to do that? Because you get a free digital image emailed to you every month along with junk journal tips, a note from the bookmaker, a checklist of supplies, updates from me, junk journal tips. Did I say that? Yep. And um, I have a Facebook group. Come and join the Paper, Paper Outpost Facebook group. Uh, having a lot of fun over there, doing weekly and monthly challenges. Everything is pretty low stress over there. So come on over and enjoy the fun. Kick your heels up and uh, dive into the papers with us and have some laughs and um, you're more than welcome just to lurk too you don't have to uh, post or anything you can just hang out be inspired and uh, enjoy and um, um, oh it's easy to join just so you you know how to join just go over to the paper outpost Facebook group answer the four questions agree to the rules read the rules agree to the rules and then you should be automatically approved um, and go from there and I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for some of the tools uh, that I, I use on the Paper Outpost here, um, you can find links to those in my in my Amazon shop. And you can also find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn. And, and if you find value here, please like, subscribe, and share, and click the notification bell. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>